Hello, ActuSage here on the Sage channel, and welcome back to more Singular Survival. Now, you might notice a few things are different here if you've been actually paying attention to this, and the fact that there's, well, pretty much um, nothing over here. And in fact, I think I've cut this down a little bit more as well, and uh, yeah, things are a bit of a mess. I've gone ahead and um, I was recording it just in case something really amazing happened, but nothing did. But I've gone ahead and took the ship and ground down pretty much everything until I got to here where it became um, a bit more of a nuisance, honestly, because of grinding this would be very, very difficult without bumping the ship and all this nonsense. I even ground down a battery here, which means we lost some of those uh, powerful components. I am starting to get very tempted to put on a mod to go ahead and get the power cells back when one is grinding down a battery pack because it is silly that you just lose those completely. Uh, what else have I done? Well, that was pretty much it. It was just a lot of time of me grinding stuff down. I would have kept going and pretty much demolished almost everything except for the solar panels, which were eventually going to be moving up there. Um, but it hit me, you know what, this is Spacers. If something is taking too long to do, which it was taking ages, you're supposed to go ahead and engineer a better solution. So what I'm thinking I'm going to be doing today is actually rejigging the flying sausage to be more of a destructive vehicle when it comes to disassembling structures, which means I'm going to actually go ahead and be removing these thrusters down here. Uh, including our fancy little light, and I'm going to be going ahead and just rejigging. Oh, you can see I already started removing some of these random thrusters up here. Wow, those were about to fall. Uh, I'm going to be rejigging the whole thing basically to um, have more grinders on the front, and I'm also thinking more welders on the back, as well as installing a remote control thing so we can actually, you know, switch our direction of flight when we're using the welders instead of trying to fly the ship all backwards. Uh, you can also see I've removed the makeshift thrusters that we had on the top so it's actually cleaning up the look of the ship a little bit and uh, we'll get to probably welding a lot of these up because we still want to have a lot of forward backwards left right stuff I'm figuring if we add more grinders and more welders we're not going to have to worry about tilting the ship forward and backwards as much so we won't have to actually worry about needing as much forward and backwards power oh, let's get rid of you two little spotlight guy there we go. And so, yeah, we're going to be... Oh, right, inventory's full. We're going to be rejigging all of this um, right here, right now. Um, yeah, starting out, though, I'm probably going to need to be placing a lot of stuff into these inventories or into the main ship inventory. Oh, and by the way, I did weld up some of these. I tried to get them welded up the most I could, I should say. Got all the stuff on the top welded, just uh, not so much all the actual refineries themselves. They're still cooking away, though. If we were to actually go ahead and check some of these refineries, you can see they're still producing ourselves a bunch of uranium. And if we were to go ahead and say rain, oh, uranium ingot, you should be able to see that. Yeah, we're cooking them out, and we should, yeah, here we go, the reactors. You can see they're relatively well fed. Heck, we got 157 in there right now. So I think we'll actually go ahead and transfer like uh, 20 out of that into whatever reactor 4 is, just so it's a little bit more spread out. We don't need it all in just one little spot where <laughs> if that thing goes, everything goes. So that should help us out a little bit spreading out our uranium distribution. Um, right, and as we get more of these components ready to go, they'll refine faster. By the way, if you're wondering where these solar panels are going to go, I'm thinking I'm going to be building out sort of from like right here on each of the sides, so I'll have a huge solar array on around the ship. And once we get the ship up into orbit, we'll just point the ship at the sun, so we won't have to worry about power issues there. Alrighty, let's go ahead, check our inventory here. We got a fair amount of hydrogen. Let's find the main storage container in this facility. And in fact, let's go ahead and take two of these uh, if it'll let me. Oh, right, my inventory's full, of course. Let's just type in main. Um, okay, we need underscore one's probably quickest. Also, you probably notice that you should, if everything's worked correctly, be able to see my mouse. It might be a bit small, but there it is, dancing in the middle of the screen, dancy, dancy mouse. Uh, that's because I'm going ahead and recording with Shadowplay now. It does mean that my files will be smaller, but it also means I have to run all the footage through Handbrake to make sure the variable frame rate that Shadowplay records in comes out as a steady probably 30 to 60 frames per second. I'm not sure which I'll use. Given my frame rate now uh, is 36, this whole thing might be uploaded at 30 frames per second, even though sometimes it does pop up higher. Alrighty. Just, that's just a heads up why suddenly you can see my mouse, or at least should be able to see my mouse. It also means if I alt-tab, though, you will be able to see my desktop randomly. So if I need to show you something in another random screen, I can actually do that, too. Alrighty, how do we want to do this? Well, we're going to go ahead and, first off, pick up the stuff we've dropped here. Excuse me, pieces. Uh, I need to pick all of you up. Did I just... Huh! 
I was able to reach in there and access the grinder's inventory. Very interesting, that. Uh, we're going to remove this vent. Looks like it still takes quite some time to grind down a small ship vent. And we're going to remove the cockpit because we're going to be doing a whole bunch of region because I really want a ton of grinders. And hopefully we got enough supplies to get this done or else we're going to end up in a, well, rather embarrassing state where suddenly, well, nothing's done. Uh, go ahead and grind the stuff down. Very interesting that the bulletproof glass is the majority of the time on that piece, and then all of a sudden it's like everything else at the last second, they're just grinding it down quickly. Alrighty, and we keep nicking other little components. Uh, the only downside with our rejig here is that the way I'm doing it means our cockpit is going to need new piping, basically. Because I'm thinking I'm going to move our cockpit to like right here. Um, maybe even forward a little bit more and just have welder or grinders on top of right here and on the bottom here. Also means, of course, we're going to be moving these thrusters. Now, given that my inventory is at times three, I know I shouldn't grind these down right away. Because if I do, my inventory will get full up. So I'm not going to grind down these thrusters yet. First off, I'm going to just go ahead and install, start putting in the, uh, did I call those grinders? And I shouldn't grind down those thrusters yet. Let's go ahead, though, and put in some big old shiny grinders right here. Cool. So you'll go like so. You will go like so. There we are. And then at the bottom, we'll go ahead and put two down there as well. But first, let's try to weld these guys up. You see we're going to need large steel tubes and small steel tubes. Oh, and we even ran short on a few motors there. Uh, this emptied our inventory down a little bit, but not quite as much as we would have liked. Uh, well, so we're going to be needing this because I'm figuring we'll just have a this sort of four-way connector thing again. Um, again, shame there's not a six-way large connector. That would really, really help things out. And uh, we're not going to be able to put the other one down because it takes interior plates and we just put the 13 we had into that. So we'll grab some more of those as well as drop off just pretty much everything we have right now. And we'll just come back and grab it as we need it. So interior plates, we'll grab, let's say, 40 of them. Small steel tubes, we'll grab 100 of them. Motors, we know we're going to need you and our armor is full up. So there we go. And we'll just sort of put in what we can right now. Construction components, this, that, and the other thing. Cool. Very cool. And you again, like so. That should be wrapping you around the whole way. Yes, except for a small connector this way. Groovy. That should have everything set there. Now we just need to rejig the lower section down here. And unfortunately, our inventory is still a bit full up. Let's uh, just try to drop off anything else we can. There we go, small steel tubes. Again, we're needing the large and construction components now for those. Go ahead and drop these off. There we are. And uh, let's just grind down those other things down here. Nice and quick-like. Hopefully our inventory will be able to hold it all, or not. Wow, those uh, really fill up your inventory quick. Let's see if we can apply any of the stuff we just got off onto these. Nope, not really. Not really at all. Blimey, we're going to have to be shifting a bit of stuff here, aren't we? Uh, what else? What, do I have anything else to talk about? Well, I've not done an update video in ages, because let's be honest, Joel is doing pretty good at doing the official update videos, so it sort of seems redundant for me to make update videos simply covering what they're going over. Um, what else? L large ship battles and stuff like that. Hmm? Does that catch your ears? Perk your ears up at least? Uh, Zog's been wanting to do a large ship battle in a while on his stream, so I hear. And Scott has been very, very busy building himself up a warship. Well, truth is, I've actually gone ahead and been fiddling off and on with two large warships of my own. And I believe Zog is currently out of town, so no time to battle on him there. But you'll probably end up seeing those ships on my channel within the next week or two. Uh, just being shown off and then once Zot comes online I'll actually go ahead and battle him hopefully and record that footage for myself and then put out said videos of those ships battling but a little sneak preview at least in verbal previewing uh, one ship looks sort of like a giant flying asterisk which is very very big and it dropped my frame rate down to seven frames per second in a world where I was pretty far away from any planets, so that's pretty spoopy. Not sure it'll actually work on Joel's server, um, so we'll have to find out if that ship can even be battled. And then the other one is I'm calling the King's Cane, and uh, that one doesn't currently have much to it, except for the fact that it's a zero mods ship, so it's got no mods used at all, which has been a rather difficult, actually, because I've become very used to using um, industrial thrusters and modded turrets all sorts of stuff like that. But hey, I managed to put that together. So you should be seeing those in the next week or two on my channel. Okie dokie. And that little speech gave us time to place in all those components we needed and basically get our new setup here um, up and running, at least somewhat. 
I'm thinking that I might go ahead and replace maybe this pipe with a four-way connector and then have another row of grinders here. And then the same thing over here with this four-way connector just simply having a corner come out of it. It's going to require a lot of rejigging and I suspect that the flying sausage is no longer going to be named the flying sausage after we're done with this. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip it to forward until we've got more of this uh, design laid out and stuff. And by the way, I am going to be cutting off quite a few oop, inventories full uh, thrusters that we, mm, not necessarily the bottom ones, but you know, like the one I'm grinding down right now that we might need. Main plan is we're never going to undo this thing right here <laughs> until we are absolutely sure we're ready to rumble. All right, let's uh, get to it with the cutting and the building and stuff. And there we go. That's everything pretty much placed and hooked up. Just got to weld it up now. Um, also, my suit energy is indeed low. As you can see, like I said, the pipes are looped around and connected in on... Oh, dear. Let me bump in everything like a fool. On every side. Once again, though, just needs to be welded up. Everything should now work in theory to grind down um, pretty much anything we run into. And this ship will be good on any planet we visit, pretty much, I think. I don't think there's any planets that have zero atmosphere. Uh, even Mars has some atmosphere so it should still fly there only trouble is if we run into something in space we want to grind down as it is right now of course it would not function whatsoever because well these are atmospheric thrusters so we are going to in the future rig this up to actually function in space as well and that should be much easier because you don't need to worry about it weighing too much it can be a slow lumbering craft uh, and of course we still need to work on upgrading our welding array and of course just welding it Alrighty, uh, with that said, I'm going to recharge my energy and try to weld all this up because I don't think you guys want to see me just buzzing about uh, quickly gathering. Oh, I need 200 motors. Let me grab 200 motors. And all oh, right, we need more motors. Because, look, I can only carry, <laughs> holy hell, um, 98 motor motors at a time. And those will probably go pretty quick. Actually, these aren't using up too much. They're only like two each. I didn't realize that. I guess I must be used to uh, working on large ships. But anyway, though, um, I'm not going to make you watch me go back and forth 22,000 times. I'll just jump ahead until we are further along. And then, you know what? Next time, I'm going to, instead of cutting ahead me placing the blocks and designing it, I'll just leave that in and straight away just cut out me building. Welding. There we are. Everything done. Whew. All right, so now all those woo, woo, grinders should work. I nearly called them welders. I was thinking, God, it'll be so nice having these done because if we build another ship, we can just fly it up there and weld it up right away. And then I just just now remembered that uh, these are all grinders, right? So this will help us get rid of the rest of the base. Uh, unfortunately, this does mean that we're probably going to also need some more th downwards thrust because I remember that could barely keep us aloft sometimes. So I think we'll need a tiny bit more. Uh, also, the plan is to install a few battery packs as well, so if we do every now and again go into that overload range, the battery pack should hopefully pull us back from the brink of death. Um, yarp. Uh, what else do we need? Well, we're probably going to be welding this beam up or getting rid of it altogether. I'm not sure yet, because for our forward and backwards thrusters, I'm figuring we might have an odd pylon growing up this way up into the air here. Uh, nonetheless, let's actually go ahead and just move these thrusters since we're right here right now. Drawing these down to this point and go ahead and put them in, if I can remember, there we go, where I put these uh, to just have some more thrusters aiming downwards here. Do we just want to line them up on themselves like this? That seems rather dangerous because if we lose a thruster behind it, this one would just fall off. I think what we're actually going to do is have, let's actually move this down one. God dang it, I don't want to nick the background. Uh, so it's lined up with these as well as with these. That way it's double security for all of this. Now we'll have this pylon going up, this uh, line going all the way down the whole length of the thing. I'll fly right behind it a bit quicker to place when you just like so. And this will give us more than enough room to place our new and improved, it's not really improved of course, but our new downwards thruster right here. Um, Let's move over a little bit. Oh, we can't place it like perfectly offset. It's just going to be a little bit offset. I'll just place these right here and get welding. Oh, wow. Oh, right. Of course, we won't have all the supplies. We didn't grind this down all the way. I should, of course, also probably have actually welded up that new beam we put in fully before doing this, but that uh, should be good enough, I think. It's not like it's 
in danger of being blown up or attacked or anything way up here in the sky. And also, I've noticed that the demon doggies have yet to really do any damage to any of our supporting structure that we installed, so we're pretty much safe and sound from any sort of danger that this planet has at the moment. I mean, we destroyed that one droid spawning base. I figure maybe before we leave the planet, you know, we'll get this thing up and running and we'll have our thrusters to escape the planet. I'm thinking change of plans, we might put some Atmos thrusters on this first and just go over to that uh, 30 kilometers away SPAT district headquarters and destroy them. We'll park the ship where it won't get shot up and we'll just fly in there like we did before probably and take them out. Maybe make a small attack craft and zip in there really, really quickly. That should, in theory, um, probably defeat them, just like the other station was defeated with that one fighter that we just got some lucky missiles off. All we'd have to do is fly up and under the facility the right way or get to the right point and just take out their uh, spawning antenna and then just slowly work our way inside. Hell, I think this time we might even target their power supply. That's a bit of a whiles off. I probably shouldn't spend too much time thinking about that. Uh, right now, we're still in the process of upgrading and rejigging this craft here. It just hit me. I could have put the thrusters here, but eh, I think they're fine where they are. Uh, let's also go ahead and, while we're poking around, one of the things I remember us running low on almost instantaneously was when we were building these originally, were just motors. So let's just go ahead and queue up. Uh, this is an incomplete one. <sighs> Number seven is going to be our new special master one, but it's incomplete. So let's go ahead and queue up. Yeah, there we go. A couple thousand here. Hopefully we'll have enough supplies. If not, we can always go finding more, probably nickel. And then assembler three, our other assembler, will queue you up to have a few thousand as well. There we go. So that should get us, I don't know, a few thrusters up and running from this planet. We'll probably run out of supplies before it produces all this, but I just wanted to have them queued up so it'll be cooking like crazy as we're building here. Because this will take a while to be grinding down and rebuilding everything. You see, I'm, I'm thinking I even might remove this because if we're putting in a bunch of welders here, I'm a little bit worried about the flames from these hitting them. Uh, that said, if we have them far enough back, we should be all right here. What I'm going to do actually is we don't have a cockpit. Son of a bitch. I was going to select that thruster and just tell it to go full power. We could still do that, I guess, if... Mm, see, this is this is dangerous, because if this thruster does burn through this, everything will disconnect. I was about to go into the control panel and just turn all the thrusters on full, just to see if these could hit this, but given this is at full health, let's assume it doesn't, but let's not actually risk that right now. Let's um leave it as is. Um, yeah, let's leave it as is. In fact, let's go ahead and... Grind down this thruster, put it over there to our left where we just put in the other ones, and we're actually going to eventually go ahead and remove the thrusters down here at the bottom and extend out our thr bottom thrusters that way. And then when we build, when we build the big thruster thing that's going to stick up here in the middle some weird way, uh, we'll just add forward and backwards thrusters to that. And then our side thrusters will rejig again. This ship's going to be changing an awful, awful lot in this episode. Let's see if we can... Um, not babble too much, because then we can get maybe the whole thing done in one sitting, eh? Or one episode. It'll all be done in one sitting, no matter what, I figure. You know, I really cannot wait. By the way, sorry, I'm not cutting to a serious progress point. It's just sort of the middle of me working. But I really cannot wait till the dang systems at the bottom left. You know, if we go ahead and press escape down here. Oh, I can't just bring up my mouse. I mean, I'm used to Star Citizen now with the alt space bar. I did that Starfare tour. But, um... I cannot wait till till energy, oxygen, hydrogen, health are all status bars. I mean, surely they must be thinking that they're going to convert those eventually to just bars of health and stuff and not just numbers. Because uh, recently, if you don't know, the Fantastic Hat films have started their proper survival let's play in Space Engineers. It's really awesome. They've started out on a moon on the way to the planet. There's, you know, a wonderful amount of hat films cursing. If uh, you don't know, they curse a lot. They're very raunchy, silly bastards. Um, but it is enjoyable to watch. And they're not derping it too bad. You know, a few derps here and there, but overall pretty good so far. And um, but what I found while watching is just how agonizingly painful it is to look for where their energy and health and oxygen and stuff is at. Like, when you're playing, I find it's easier because you just glance down there and you know the exact one. But when you're watching somebody else playing and they go, oh, God, look at my health or my energy or something, and you really quickly glance down there, 
there's just like a mess of text there when you're watching a video and it is quite annoying. So I do hope that the devs, when they get around to redoing the UI, which I'm sure they must be as it's, well, for one, the scale is still atrocious, but uh, once I get around to redoing it to make it more user-friendly and streamlined and all that stuff, I do hope we get proper, you know, sort of bars there. Maybe you can have a percentage as well as the actual bar. That would be very, very nice. But uh, yeah, currently very annoying. All right, back to actually cutting ahead to the, I've made more progress than a single thruster. Oh, and I should say I have started swinging music in the background, but uh, you probably can't hear that because of copyright. Alrighty, there we go. I made a little bit more progress. Got the thruster shifted over here. But I thought I'd go ahead and talk on another talking point instead of just finishing this ship up. It's occurred to me that destroying that drone spawning station over there might have been a mistake. And an ideal thing to do, probably in a future world once we get the voxel tools in for survival, would have been to build a big huge hill here of dirt. And then have the turrets shoot down the drones and the drones would crash on the other side of the hill. That way the turrets wouldn't keep shooting them. Or have at least a wall set up or something to block the turrets from continuing shooting them. That way you could go over there and manually gather the supplies from the fallen drones, giving you an almost endless supply of stuff. Now, of course, the devs did add the cyber dogs to go ahead and give you an easy source of supplies. As such, if we were to close our eyes and hold the trigger down a little bit here. There we go, we've defeated a cyber hound. Um, in theory, I should now be able to loot the cyber hound and get stuff off of it. I can't. Let's uh, close our eyes once again. Okay, yep, it's been defeated. I can't stand killing doggities, even cyber hounds that are out to defeat you. Then again, I'm not sure you can make the argument these were out to defeat me, considering they were just stuck in a... Oh! <gasps> power cells! That's awesome! Drop that, pick up power cells. That's awesome. And now these shouldn't despawn, hopefully. But yeah, you can see these are... They were intended to give you supplies. Um... But apparently they just get stuck in holes now and dance about. And again, I'm not sure we can argue they were really here to cause trouble if they were stuck down there running in place. Uh, let's do an underscore two. No, wait, underscore one for our main cargo. And drop all this stuff we just gathered off. That's pretty nifty. Um, I am going to defeat the last one. Once again, doing the close eyes because I feel like a monster for dealing anything dog-like. Uh, there it is. Yeah you, get, uh, yeah, you can definitely believe I closed my eyes there because I'm sure <laughs> I'm just staring at ground for half a second there. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. I don't even know what I got off that one. But yeah, you can see why they were built there. I just think it would have been quicker if I had taken into account the idea of my turrets shooting down drones. Of course, that said, we would have had to have had ammo to continue doing that. And ideally, in the long term, I could have made like a big grinder field on the other side of the wall to just gather supplies. Maybe we'll think about that before we actually destroy the district headquarters. But then again, I think on Mars, there might be some enemy facilities. So we could just do it there and just plunder this Earth-like planet to safety mode. Alrighty, once again, I'm going to now jump ahead until we have, um... Well, until I've ground down more of the stuff that's already here. And then we'll have a little bit of a planning period today. So, planning period! <laughs> 